Oh, All yeah. right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Dr. Uh, Shelley Wong. I'm so excited to talk to you about your trial and congratulations on your presentation as well as your publication in JAMA. Um, so can you go ahead and just give us a little snippet of the trial, the results that you shared with us earlier today? Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. We're live at San Antonio. And uh, I just gave my presentation earlier today on the Comet study, which um, people have been waiting a little while to get the results. And we finally have the first pre-planned analysis of the Comet study. And for those of you who don't know, it was a prospective randomized non-inferiority trial, which is the first head-to-head -head comparison of surgery versus active monitoring for low-risk DCIS. Excellent, excellent. So can you share with us the main results of the trial? Yeah, so our goal of the study was to do a direct head-to-head -head comparison of what happens to patients after randomization. So in the group that had surgery, uh, which was a one-to-one -one randomization, so half the women were randomized to the surgery arm, in the group that were randomized to the surgery arm, they had surgery right away, they had usual care as we, we usually do for patients who have DCIS, and the active monitoring patients did not have surgery right away. They had mammograms every six months, and they only went ahead and had surgery if they had progression to invasive cancer. Now, um, the, the big concern about all of this is, hey, if you don't operate on patients right away, then does a DCIS become a really bad cancer? They can't be curable anymore. And so because of that concern, we had an early pre-planned analysis um, with a cumulative two-year invasive cancer rate because we definitely wanted to show to ourselves, our patients, um, that this was a safe approach. And what we found was that in the group that had surgery right away, uh, there was a 5.9% chance of getting um, invasive cancer. And for those women who are randomized to the active monitoring group, there was a 4.2%. Um, that Those numbers were not statistically different from each other. And the other really important thing that we needed to know is, are the cancers the same? Are they bigger in the group that had monitoring versus those who had surgery right away? And we found that, uh, much to our you know, relief, that the cancers were not any bigger, they were not more likely to be node positive, and they were not more likely to be high grade. So, so far, the results are early. Uh, we definitely need more long-term follow-up, but I think this is a really important first step in the direction of trying to de-escalate surgical treatment for low-risk DCIS. Thank you so much for that excellent summary. Um, so I'm curious, does this change anything for you on Monday morning? Or are you waiting for the long-term follow-up results you're <laughs> talking about? Or it's somewhere in between, can you share? I think it's somewhere in between um, because I uh, know that about 40% of the patients on the Comet study have already passed the five-year point. So we're really excited to know what is shown in those patients. We have a few more years left before we have the next report out, but. I think um, we would have to find a lot of cancers in the monitoring group for it to be worse uh, than, the, uh, than the usual care you know, surgery group. Um, so I think it's promising. Again, I don't think it's enough right now to change practice, but I'm hoping that once we get the five and seven year results, which are the next two planned analyses, we'll be able to have enough data to be able to inform patients about whether active monitoring is something that they should feel comfortable with. Again, it's not about what women should do. I think it's all about providing them evidence so they can have better options on what to do with a very low risk condition for which a third of women are getting mastectomies right now. Great point, great point. Um, and so this is a very unique study and whenever you have these surgery versus no surgery um, trials to try and right size treatment for patients. It's always challenging because it's not blinded, then you have um, the concern where patients are reluctant to receive one treatment. Can you talk us through some of the challenges and how you worked through them? Yeah, well, I think you're absolutely right. When you have clinical trials that are designed with one arm being surgical and the other not being, and being non-surgical, I mean, patients are not blinded. They know if they're having surgery. Um, and providers are not blinded. They know which patients had surgery. So it's a very specific kind of um, uh, study design that's a little bit more vulnerable to this issue we call non-acceptance of allocation. And so to get around that, we knew that we were likely to see some of this non-acceptance of allocation. And so we planned two analyses. One was, was an intention to treat analysis where we compared the two groups that were randomized. We included everybody, regardless of what they did. Um, and then we had a pre-specified analysis called the per-protocol analysis, where we only looked at those patients who stuck to the protocol for the arm that they were randomized to. Does that make sense? 
And um, what we found there was actually even more encouraging, where patients who had surgery had about a 9% risk of cancer, and the patients who did not have surgery right away but had aptic monitoring only required surgery 3% or, or had only a 3% risk of invasive cancer. And that's with 83% fewer operations than the patients in the guideline concordant care group. So I think we'll continue to follow these patients. We probably will continue to see cancers in both groups. But what we really want to show uh, and, and test is if we don't do surgery right away, do the patients who are going, undergoing active monitoring have any higher risk of cancer? We don't think that that will be true, but we need to test that. And do the cancers look any different? And at two years, they don't look different, but we'll have to continue to watch that and test for that as well. Excellent, excellent. I do want to wrap this up by congratulating you and your team for really including the patient voice on this clinical trial. I think the endpoints were, or the different treatment uh, strategies are of particular interest depending on which patient you're speaking with. And so it's really important to hear what patients uh, think. If you can just leave us with any final words about yeah. that uh, specifically. Well, I think systemic therapies have gotten so good that we've had to rethink the role of local regional therapy for much of what we treat. And especially for a disease like DCIS, where we know that patients have a low mortality risk, we need to really question the aggressiveness of our local regional approaches, especially if there might be a systemic treatment that might be just as good. And for, for diseases where there's um, a lot of different options that yield the same sort of outcome. I mean, surgeons who are very familiar with the lumpectomy radiation versus mastectomy discussion. Um, it's a very, very preference sensitive decision. And I'm hoping that one day for patients with low risk DCIS, they can have the option of whether to go forward with surgery as we've been doing for many decades now, or whether they would prefer to have an active monitoring approach. And to be able to offer that to patients in the future, we need to prove to ourselves and our patients that both, both options are safe. So Absolutely. I'm very excited about what this shows for the future. Wonderful. Very nicely said. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Wong. Really nice to see you, Tyler. Thanks so much. Hey.